Hey, hey, it's the after party. And just in case you wanted some more, it's not the F out number 24. Hey, man, it's all about the Lions only show. Jamel Charlo went up against Jorge Cota. And did anybody get that KTFO stamp? Oh, yeah. I knew this fight would definitely live up to the name because Jorge Cota got knocked the fuck out. He got knocked the fuck out in the third round, man. In the third round, I, I had said the fifth. I thought Jorge would get it to the fifth round. But no, man. Jamel Charlo, man, he got him up out of there, man. He hit him with that left, hit him with that straight left right, and that motherfucker flat, he lay flat on his back. It was a wrap, man. And, and you want to know what I liked about it? Because Jamel did exactly what we told his ass to do. He worked off the jab, man. He had great footwork, man. When things are starting to get wild and sloppy, man, he went back and he reset it, and he went on ahead, man, and he let the fight come to him until he was able to land exactly what he wanted to land, man. You know, I will say this, though, man. When he knocked him down the first time in that third round, man, he was out of there, man. They should have stopped the fight, man. That referee should have made Jorge walk up to him like the referee did in that Anthony Joshua fight. You know, when he went up to Flopshua and he asked him to walk forward to him, and he couldn't because he was holding himself up on the ropes. The same damn thing Jorge Cota was doing. And, and when they told him to resume the fight, man, Jermail went over there and blasted his ass, man, with that straight left, right. And it was a wrap, man. Flat on his back, man. Mr. Cleveland, anything you want to touch on on it? Yeah, man. I don't know why Jorge Cota came out in Southpaw for this fight, man. I'm not saying I, I'm not saying he hasn't done that before, but I just haven't seen him do it. And when he did that, I'm like, yeah, this fight going to be over faster than I thought because you can do that against a lower level opposition. You cannot do that against elite opposition unless you fucking Terrence Crawford, man. Terrence Crawford is the only elite level fighter who I've seen him switch orthodox southpaw no matter who he is fighting, man. Hey, man, you know what? I'm going to have to probably rewind that part, man, and edit it out and play that part about five times in a row, man. I love it when you put Bud Crawford over, man, the best welterweight in the game. I can't say he the best welterweight in the game. Not <laughs> yet. He, he, he got a big dog. Oh, 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 oh. And Earl Spence, he got to beat. He do that, then I can give him the claim. Until then, he, he one of the best head welterweights. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get back to this Jorge hey, Cota. Easy work, easy work. Charlo, knockout. Um, I just, I didn't like the fact that he came out like that. To start off slow, first round, they filling each other out. Same thing, second round. Third round, Cota. Uh, uh, Charlo catches him with a vicious right hook and sends him down. Um, like you said, he got up. The ropes weren't holding Cota up, but you could tell his faculties were not there. And like you said, the ref should have stopped that fight, man. Of course, all the fighters are going to say they can. Yeah, 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 I'm ready. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And my man Charlo came, like you said, with that one-two, that, that jab and that straight right, and it was curtains. My man hit the canvas like a ton of bricks. Oh, my God. The look on his face when he was knocked out was priceless. Uh, Charlo did what he had to do. I know he'd much rather this been Harrison, but hey, man, this is, this, is, this is the outcome that he wanted, man. This is the outcome that that, that I'm glad that he got a late replacement. It could have been a damn Anthony Flashua situation where he ends up getting beat himself, but he took it serious. You can tell the only thing I didn't like is he wasn't going to the body. I feel like he could have went to the body a little more, but I believe that him going in a southpaw stance kind of threw uh, uh, Maul off for him to Maul, threw uh, Jamil off for a second. But, man, he did what we thought he was going to do, knock Cotto the fuck out. Man, scratch all of that, man. Hold on, man. You mentioned this motherfucking name, man. I got to talk about him, too, man. That damn Tony Harrison was in the building, too, man. And what and what I loved about it was when Jermell Charlo knocked Cota's ass out, man, I love Tony Harrison was out there clapping his hands, man, and smiling, being a good sport and everything, man. I love that shit, man. And then when they interviewed Jamel Charlo at the end of the fight, 
and they asked him about Harris. He's like, oh, yeah, man, you know, he backed out of it and everything else, man, you know, uh, but he was smart not to take the fight this time and all this other stuff. And what I'm loving is that as they bury in Tony Harrison, he just out there in the crowd just laughing and smiling at the motherfuckers, man. I know he said, man, I can't wait to get your motherfucking ass back in the ring so I can beat the shit out of your ass again, man. I was loving that shit, Mr. Cleveland. Did you notice that, man? Yeah, I saw that, man. And, and I'm glad Harrison was, he was, you know, clapping happy for, for the boy Charlo that he won. But uh, that's the fight we want to see, man. We want to see what, what was the real deal if if my man if my man Mel really got robbed or if Tony Harrison actually won the first fight. So that's what this second fight is really going to prove to a lot of people, man. I'm glad. But you said, like you said, you saw, man, he was out there clapping, skinning and grinning, happy for the boy, happy for the boy. So I'm glad it didn't turn into nothing, nothing too bad. You can tell it was good sportsmanship, good showmanship. And I can't wait for that fight to happen, man. Hopefully the winner of that fight, go collect the rest of them belts at 154. So, yeah, man, this is what boxing needs, man. This, this is what I love about it, man. That It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, it was good sportsmanship tonight, man. But I know that motherfucker said, I can't wait to get your ass in that goddamn ring, man. Ain't going to be no good sportsmanship then. And it damn sure wasn't no good sportsmanship in that fucking press conference they had. Man, I'm going to leave a link to that motherfucker in the comment section, man. This was the fight I wanted to see. This was the fight for the summer for me, man. I swear, it wasn't no damn Pacquiao or Thurman. It wasn't none of that shit. That was the fight I wanted to see for the summer, man. They had me so hyped for this shit, man. They had me hyped for this fight since December 22nd when they fought the first time. Man, damn, I hate he got injured and hurt, man. But it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And when it's and when it come, man, we're going to be all over it. And we're going to keep y'all up to date on everything, man. So, yeah, man, this is an after-party show, man. Hey, we'll be back next week, man, because the twin brother in action. Jamal Charlo defending his middleweight title against uh, Brandon Adams, man. So um, this should be a good one, man. Should be a good one. So the Lions Only Show will continue next week, man. We'll be back for Knock the F Out podcast number 25, man. Chuck P. Seville's finest, Mr. Carl Cleveland. We up out of here.